Most people know there is a lake on top of Raccoon Mountain, but it's what's going on underneath the mountain that may help keep you warm this winter. Good evening. I'm Latricia Thomas. And I'm Calvin Sneed. While the Raccoon Mountain pump storage plant is down for maintenance right now, tonight we are taking you inside an area most people have never seen to show you how it works. Raccoon Mountain senior operator Heath Rogers is our guide. Once we get into the bottom, when we step off the van, we're roughly 120 feet below the river level at that point. Once we arrive, nobody ever gets to see this. In this huge cavern are four combination pump and generator units all in a row. So here's how Raccoon Mountain generates electricity. First, water is taken out of the Tennessee River. It flows down here to the pumps. The pumps here then pump that water up to the reservoir. That happens overnight. In the daytime, that same water comes back down the pipe to the pumps that are now generating electricity. Then that water goes right back to the Tennessee River. Basically, it's recycled water. Water comes in and goes into the pump and through what's called the spherical valve. There are four of them, and they work just like any valve inside your home. When the unit's online generating or pumping, uh, this spherical valve will be 100% open. This one's out being serviced, and here's where it normally sits, held in place by 80-pound bolts. Oh, my goodness. How many of these? 52 of these. From the spherical valve through this huge pipe, 400 feet further back into the mountain, then... You'll get to the elbow. It's about a thousand foot vertical to the top of the mountain. During the daytime, when that same water comes back down the mountain, it rotates one of four turbines to generate power. Cables then carry that power up the mountain through the plant's 1,000 foot elevator shaft. 38 floors. And my ears are popping. Yes. Yeah, it travels quick. That's just insane. The electricity is then tied into TVA's power grid. Plant manager Ken Cornett says there's a mindset down here. Water is either coming in or it's going out. And it's, it's really an engineering marvel when you come in and look and, and observe what they've done. So what's the difference between the units at uh, Raccoon Mountain and the nuclear unit at Watts Bar? Well, both of them generate the same amount of power, but from a cold start, it usually takes days to get a nuclear reactor fired up. At a moment's notice, Raccoon Mountain can start generating full power in about 60 seconds. When it gets cold this winter and you need elec extra electricity to keep warm, TVA has a backup plan that can generate power at a moment's notice. While the Raccoon Mountain pump storage plant is shut down right now for maintenance, we're taking you inside the mountain. There is a process of water pumping out of the Tennessee River up to a lake a thousand feet on top of the mountain. The plug is then pulled and the water comes right back down. On its way back to the river, that same water runs through turbines that generates electricity. It's, it's an unknown and it's, it's really an engineering marvel when you come in and look and, and observe what they've done. So why is Raccoon Mountain important? Well, it helps relieve the stress on TVA's nuclear plants. Now, it does take power to pump water up the mountain, but that's done at night when the demand for power in the entire system is low. Raccoon Mountain is able to generate power during the day so the nuclear reactors don't have to work as hard.